Yes, viewers, uh, this place we are looking at is not uh, Libya or one uh, desert like that. This is Anambra State and uh, Ozobolo, specifically. That is the erosion site at uh, Ozobolo. Well, uh, you have seen it and uh, we are going to visit this site to know what is going on there. Last time we visited is about two weeks plus. So, but uh, another thing added to this is thumbs up to Ekusigo local government. I will tell you what Ekusigo local government did. You see this place you are watching now. Observe it. You see workers clearing that uh, middle of the road. They are clearing the sand, clearing the bushes at the middle of that road. Well, this is just a highlight and uh, I sincerely give thumbs up to the chairman of Ekusigo local government. This is what we expect every local government. You are, you are welcome to Yanga Life channel and today we are going to visit erosion control site similar to that we have at Oba. But this one is at Ozobolo. This one is even bigger than uh, Oba own, if you ask me. So, but, um, you know, we are going to visit there and uh, see what exactly that is happening there. And like I said, I give a very big thumbs up to the chairman of the Ebusigo local government. You saw a glimpse of uh, what they are doing. This is what we expect every local government through which any department they are given the responsibility to do that, to do in every road. They are clearing the bushes and the sand at the middle of the road. I'm going to show you the full clip of that video so that uh, you see and understand what we are talking about. Yes, we are saying that our environment and our road in particular is very, very dirty. We are not hiding anything. We want a good and neat environment. That is what we have been campaigning in this channel. And a good road, they said, is the pulse or the artery in which the economy pauses that is what the world bank said and we cannot you know keep quiet to see these things happening yes this erosion site at uh, ozobolo is being controlled by anambra state government that is uh, being chaired by uh, professor charles Soludo, is the one controlling the erosion however i don't know how they are going to go about it probably they are going to send the bill to the federal government for possible reimbursement that is what we are saying so we are going to decide to see exactly what is happening there let's go and don't forget to bring your own contributions don't leave this thing for me alone because i cannot do it alone i am very very sure of that without you being by my side and these things we are doing together i am sure that one day we are getting to somewhere well there are some testimonies to us that so let's go. I am still your present Pachini Let's go there. Yes, viewers, uh, we are going to the Ozobolo erosion control site. And you know that the erosion control site is at Onicho uh, uh, Road along that axis. Well, like I said in uh, my previous video, it has become an issue. The one at Oba, the same thing along that same express. Probably something was wrong with the contractor that did this work. They did not do proper work. Secondly, um, uh, I'm going to, as we travel to that place, you know, it just uh, uh, is not far from here. This is Oba. We get to. Um, Akuku, then or if it is Ozobolo. Though it's not uh, going to be properly real time movement, but we are going to give you some hints. You know, as we talk about erosion, we need to know generally what causes this gully erosion. In the order of my video, when we visited Doba, I talked about what can be the possible cause of erosion at the exit of a gota see the difference so this one is general what can cause erosion that is what we are going to discuss here what causes erosion particularly 
in this part of the world tropical rainforest zone that is the southern part of nigeria we call it tropical rainforest because in a tropical rainforest you see tall trees and a whole lot of them so that is what we are going to discuss today about the possible cause of uh, gully in tropical rainforest well um, um we are not going to take time much we'll be at ozobuli erosion site but just take it as if that you are discussing with somebody in a vehicle that is the way i want you to take a look at it here now by the left is the new main market at Oba, the one i said that has been there for 30 years and the new obobu site both of them is not far from each other that is by the left shortly we are going to enter Abuku. if we are not yet into Abuku, but the boundary is uh, somewhere here located somewhere here so like i said number one cause of gully erosion which can be attributed to a combination of natural and human induced factors you know when we talk about this gully it's not just natural majorly human induced factors that causes this gully erosion when people are constructing road they do it carelessly care should be taken in this part of the world while constructing road to give it a normal and proper channeling if not the trees and the grasses and the shrubs that was removed will be a problem if you don't replace them and do the proper channeling that is what i'm talking then uh, we talk about intense rainfall naturally intense rainfall tropical rainforest experience heavy and intense rainfall often leading to high runoff and soil erosion the erosive force of raindrops can dislodge soil particles and initiate erosion yes this one is just the natural cause of soil erosion when it comes to tropical rainforest due to heavy rain drops then uh, we move to steep topography the terrain in tropical rainforest region is often characterized by steep slopes making the landscape more susceptible to erosion especially during heavy rainfall events naturally when the rain because naturally there is rainforest there is a heavy rain sorry there is heavy rains when it comes to this part of the world and if you have a slope you have a steep topography when this rain falls you know there is tendency that the the terrain that uh, the rain will be running off with a high speed and this thing makes it uh, more susceptible to you know erosion that is the point then um, we talk about vegetation removal this one is man-made vegetation removal deforestation and clearing of vegetations for agriculture or logging reduce the protective cover of the forest Floor. the absence of uh, plants and their root systems increases soil's vulnerability to erosion i've scratched it a bit before you know when we are deforesting our region as in when removing trees probably to cook or to do other things for wood and the rest without replacement but these things are natural thing if you remove natural thing you are supposed to replace it to create a balance in the ecosystem that is the point so 
if we remove these vegetations, probably even during farming itself, if you don't replace it with crops and the other things that will balance that environment, it's going to cause erosion. That's what they are telling us. That's why, you know, uh, more as cities are developing, cities are developing, it is proper that the government should plan a well drainage system that will channel this water to the nearby river. You don't just, uh, they say digging a gutters is good, it will make the road to last. It doesn't function that way. When you dig a gutter by the roadside, you make sure that it is functional. Just like what I have been saying this thing in this channel and many people are saying it. You dig a gutter, it's not just digging a gutter, you make that gutter to be functional. Let there be a natural flow. That's why in a city, the people that understand topography very well will tell you that you have a very well planned drainage system so that this problem of erosion will not be occurring. That is the reason. So if you plan a city, there must be a proper drainage system to drain water into a river. If you stop a gutter or drainage system halfway, it's going to cause problem. That is the truth about the matter. Well, we are doing what we can do. If you see this place, this is Orifite. By the left side, you can see construction, market construction going on there. We are told that um, you know some of our people are planning to come back home to start establishing all those type of alaba international market back home i don't know but they said this one more or less belongs to or if the people that is the information that i got in that regard so let's keep going we talk about uh, logging and uh, land conversion. Logging activities and the uh, conversion of land for agriculture can disturb the natural balance of the ecosystem, exposing the soil to erosion and contributing to gully formation. Well, people don't just enter a place a vegetation and start doing whatever they want this is an estate you want to build a state please consult professional government should not allow these things to happen abruptly there should be checks and balances when it comes to this you know developments in our environment that is what we are talking about then we talk about poor agricultural practices, unsustainable agricultural practices such as slash and burn farming, improper land management, you know, and inadequate erosion control measures. This can accelerate soil erosion and gully development. Well, uh, it seems like uh, I call government in most of the things I talk. Yes, government is the only body that can checkmate all these things that the people can listen to. They say government is above everybody. Government owns everything. But government can give adequate compensation when government is interested in some things. So government has that primary responsibility to checkmate some things that are happening in the environment. It's not the issue of uh, collective bribe and uh, people having their way. No. We should be above such practice in this recent development that is going on around the world. It seems like this part of the world is seriously lacking behind. If you ask me, and that is the truth of the matter, I hope you guys watched the recent rating of uh, African countries' road infrastructure. You did see Nigeria 
as among the top 10? No. But countries like Namibia, Namibia, they don't have oil. Nigeria is far much better than what they have in that country, but they manage their resources very, very well and in an effective way. That is how human beings should behave. Well, let us always use our tongue to count our teeth. That is the much I can say in that regard. After South Africa, which is number one in the best road infrastructure, we talk about Namibia. Even Zimbabwe made the record. Libya made it. Libya that is desert, about 90% of them is desert. They made it among the top 10. Where is Nigeria? We are here talking about credible election. Let's talk something, uh, you know, we know what to say about anyway. So we talk about, uh, anyway, we are at Ozoblo now. We just entered Ozoblo. So shortly we are going to be at the Russian side. We talk about surface runoff in areas with impermeable soil or compacted surface rainwater may run off quickly leading to increased surface erosion and the formation of gullies and that is the truth of the matter well uh, next we are going to talk about landslide which is one of the causes of erosion gentlemen and ladies watch here by the left you will see workers walking at the middle of the road we just passed them now they are clearing the center of the road you can see the heap of sand that they have just formed and i hope that they are going to pack them off this is what every local government is expected you can see them in reflective jacket they are clearing the middle of the road packing the sand in fact thumbs up again for the chairman of Ekusigo local government that is a wonderful development by this local government this is what we expect every local government to do ensure that every road under their purview is clean of sand whether express or interstate road or even city road this is the responsibility of the local government you can see what they are doing in fact this have shown us that uh, it is the local government that is responsible to clean up the road and that is it so the government the state government should ensure and mandate them to always make sure that the road under their pole view is clean and off sand that is what I'm talking about here. In fact, I least expected to see this along this area. The major city themselves, they are not doing this. Even though they still have a long way to go, all these places are the Ekusigo local government. And I hope that it's not going to be just for the local government headquarters because that place along that axis is the local government headquarters uh, offices so it's not going to be only for that place it should be all around within this local government so thumbs up to them i want you to share this video so that people can see what is going on and people are taking responsibility to clean up their area so that is what we are saying well, very shortly, we are going to be at the ocean side. But before that, we talk about landslide. The combination of heavy rainfall and steep triggers landslide, which contributes to the initiation of gullies. Yes. Well, another thing is urbanization and infrastructure development. Somehow, I have scratched this one a bit. Urban expansion and infrastructure development can alter natural drainage pattern increasing surface runoff and erosion you know 
improperly managed construction activities can exacerbate gun erosion. This is exactly what I've been saying. Urbanization. Yes, uh, you will learn that uh, um, uh, Europe is very organized and uh, the road and everything is fantastic. You went and built their own. But you forget that you are altering the natural flow of water. So you must make provision for that alterations you have done to the natural flow of water and provide it for the water. And that is the truth about it. You don't just do it halfway and uh, leave, you know. So I don't know if I can explain it more than this, but we are not done yet. We are almost at the erosion control site. But I want you to take a critical look of what you are going to see at this erosion site and they imagine what you have seen earlier in terms of uh, what we brought to you in our first visit to this place this is the second time that we are visiting this place because we want to update ourselves and also our viewers of what is happening within our area and our axis well um, if you ask me i think that this one is even bigger than the other one the other of our own i think it's bigger than of our own but what baffles me is that these things don't just form within a year or two or even within a decade this thing takes more than one decade to reach this aspect of cutting off the road you can see this place it looks like a desert but this is happening within a tropical rainforest region this company they have been working around the clock to fill up this place they are going to fill up to a reasonable level before they will start the construction of uh, the gullies uh, sorry the drainage system well i don't know they are experts in this field but i thought that they are supposed to have done the drainage underground before keeping this uh, uh, laterite on top because this laterite they said usually give way that right as time goes on no matter how you press it that's why we talk about experienced construction companies it looks as if you don't know what we are doing companies like beggar will not use that right they don't know how to get that right they find they don't know what is that right when things like this happen they will look for things like sharp sand that can easily compress that soft sand don't usually give way it can soak water but remains the way it is but this one once what water touches it once it soaks water it changes shape <laughs> don't be surprised that after this thing road construction that road will give way inside to so look as if the, the road sink a bit let's see how it goes we are here to give you updates anyway so this is the erosion control site at Ozobolo and we are having a view of it. We are having a view of the erosion control site. While well, these guys are doing a good work here, this place we are standing earlier on has been part of the site. It has been part of the gully. This place we are standing now I will give you a better look of it. This place we are working now, by the right there, has been part of the gully, but it's been filled up to this level. You can see this is having a view from another angle of the total uh, area. The sand filling is going on with laterite. It is going to be 
to a certain level i guess before they start doing their construction but however um, um this is a pre-warning to people that are going to travel this christmas time but we don't know what is going to happen along these houses whether they are going to conclude with this work you know before that uh, season because if it's not done before that time people are going to find it very difficult passing through this axis and there is no shortcut going inside the villages is not quite advisable because i don't know but um let's see what happens here let's see what the government can do before that uh, time which is so you can see the gap here see the tar see where the tar ends from there down this place we are standing has been part of the gully so i'm just showing you that these guys are you know doing a good job by trying to you know fill in this place that place i showed you is the demarcation this place we are standing now has been part of the gully that is the thing i was trying to tell you then you know that we are not done with um, our you know causes of uh, this uh, gully erosion the general causes of gully erosion then we can talk about climate change this climate change is a very big thing that people still find it difficult to understand the icebergs are melting seriously and the flooding is occurring and uh, you know other things that followed climate change well change in climate pattern including increases rainfall intensify and uh, alter precipitations this can influence erosion rates in tropical rainforest region this is exactly what we are saying then we talk about land use change shift in land use such as uh, converting natural forest to plantations or other land uses can disrupt the equilibrium of the ecosystem and lead to increased erosion well um, uh, you have heard it all but let me just run round, round it up concerning this uh, causes of erosion and we proceed addressing gully erosion in tropical rainforest region requires a comprehensive approach that combines you know sustainable land management practices reforestation efforts erosion control measures and community engagement i've just summarized the ways and approaches that governments can use to solve this erosion problem combine sustainable land management practices reforestation planting trees and the rest erosion control measures if you are building drainage system you build it well and channel it properly and community engagement well i've just given us the causes of this gully erosion and the possible solutions to it gentlemen um, um i want you to take a look at last time that we visited here because what we are doing is not in vain so that you follow me and see the development that has happened here within these two weeks and uh, some few days knowing fully well that uh, we are about to enter the season of christmas and you know shortly people will start trooping in what to think about the development are they doing what they're supposed to do in terms of meeting up with uh, what is expected or they are not so from here just you take a look at uh, the gully that last time we visited what you think that they have done here 
to merit or to justify the work that they are doing here. Well, I leave you to have a view of what is going on here. Thank you as you do that. Let's watch together. I know that person than Professor Charles Soludo of Anambra State. He is the one handling the project. This one you are looking at, we have not been here before. Like I said, this is the first time. And the other one that will still visit, that the one day Vimai came to visit one time, will still go there later, but not in this video. So, Anambra State Government, thumbs up for you guys. You guys are doing well for at least uh, taking care of this uh, aspect of the road. So, but like I said, the game is uh, after the construction, federal government will pay them back. It has happened before. This is not the first time it has been happening. It is not uh, new to the state. So you can see the, they are filling up the area. This is a very deep place that could be up to that could be up to uh, 60 meters deep or thereabouts. So they are filling it up to a level that will allow them to start you know, reconstruction of the culvert, the broken culvert, it will be reconstructed. You know, but I think they are going to do a whole lot of work here, probably by, it will be reconstructed uh, by piling, or I don't know how they will do it, but I know they want to get a level first. Once they get a reasonable level, can see the drainage here this one is coming down from that side this is what is causing the problem this one and um, there are two the water coming from here and the water that is coming from across the express road there are the two erosion that is uh, damaging this place so like i said the work is to fill up this place for now and then the proper channeling will con commence that is it that joint is being threatened seriously by that erosion so but thank god uh, they have come to the rescue you can see the other culvert is off water coming from the other side follows through this culvert and the one coming from the other side follows through the other one. So I don't know, do you see the cover just break as if there is no iron, there is no rod, you know, crossing the cover. <laughs> Some of this construction, eh? I don't know, it, is, it has a very big question mark, honestly speaking. This cover is not supposed to just break like this. So if there is proper um, um, rod that connects that culvert is not supposed to just break off. Probably these people just, you know, do whatever they want, you know, in that uh, culvert construction and they allowed it like that. You can see the effect now is breaking off. If the culvert is properly done, it's not supposed to just break off like that. It would have just hung because the rods are connecting the concrete. Well, I don't know where the problem is coming from, whether it's from, uh, you can see this one, how the cover just break off. Is it supposed to break off like this? There is no iron, you know, uh, projecting out, just break off like that and see if it's a piece of uh, biscuit. <laughs> well, whether the problem is from supervision or compromise, I don't know. But I know this road was done by CCC. It was CCC that did this road, China Construction Company, during uh, Obasanjo's tenor. That was when this road was done. But actually, the job was not a bad one. But usually, all these places that has covered is where the issue always comes from. You see? 
they know that uh, this part of the world has uh, uh, this kind of red earth that uh, usually wash away and they, they, will not, they will not do the needful. That's what the Minister of Works is talking about now. That this side, south side, all these our areas have different type of soil. The soil that are usually, you know, wash away easily. So you are not doing anything serious if you don't get the, the if you don't give that job a strong base, you know, with um, enough iron rod to hold it. That's why you always talk about concrete road because the type of soil here is not that type that uh, is in other places, maybe in the north. And it, it costs more to construct road downside here than in the north. Well, let's keep watching and observing this area. Just like I said, they are filling up this place. Uh, if going by what is the best thing to have been done here, it should have been sharp sand. They would have used sharp sand to fill up this place, just like the way beggar did. You know, I remember the one beggar repaired, just something like this, but it's not as big as this. Just very, you know, a little one like this. Beggar used sharp sand. They use sharp sand to cover the place up and seal it up. Because sharp sand is better than this uh, laterite. Well, well, probably the bulk of the work will be on the drainage, the way they will do it so that uh, it will not uh, wash away again. And that is it. You're having a critical view and a detailed view of uh, Ozobolo erosion site. Work is going on there now to see to the you know, completion of this place. Probably, let's hope and see what happens before the U-tide period so that uh, people will not experience a lot of uh, traffic hold up here in fact well um let's keep watching let me just leave it like that but what i wanted to say is that uh tamad is the contractor that is handling this project and i know that uh, the company is not uh, you know probably doing badly well well, let's see how it goes but this place is supposed to be a top priority but i know it is if it is not the job will not be going on like this so let's keep uh, watching and uh, observing this place and uh, don't forget to you know um, like this video subscribe to our channel click on the notification bell and please share our videos share our videos so that others will be alerted too they will come here and they will know that work is going on and they will slow down and uh, find their way and uh, let's hear your comments what you think about this video so that uh, you know it will help everybody that is consigned both the government and uh, the general public and that is it well i'm going to take you to the signboard that indicates the owner of the job the contractor and the supervisor of this job probably the consultants too so um, shortly we'll move down there so that we'll see these things where it is boldly written and they also told us that the job the number of years guarantee that the job is going to last watch well you see this red something in this bush in this green grass you see red spot flag there mm, the place is going to the fill up will reach that axis they will keep filling it until it will reach that axis that is the the guide so we are here and we'll keep giving you updates of uh, what is happening i hope you are enjoying our videos if you are enjoying our videos please please share it subscribe and share our videos 
thank you as you do that so let's go to the scene and see the signboard uh, about people involved thank you. Yes, gentlemen, this is the uh, Obosi Interchange. Yes, we are there at Obosi Interchange, the newly constructed interchange, which is part of the uh, Second Niger Bridge project. So, um, the Second Niger Bridge Road is going to continue from this place right to connect anyone which are expressed by the right, by the left, you are going into Asaba. So you can see why it's time for the government to, you know, know how to rearrange this axis to make it, uh, you know, more functional. Well, the attention of the government is being left with uh, the old jobs that are begging for their attention. Probably they don't have time to plan for the future development. However, well, is that for the government? This is electrical market Obosi. It's a very big market. I bet you somebody coming from Asaba will arrive here first before somebody coming from Onicha. Because the road is now free coming from Asaba. You use the second Niger bridge and boom, you are here. Well, uh, we have to follow face the traffic because the reconstruction is going on down there that is where we are going so um, vehicle do face this place is supposed to be blocked completely because of this construction work that is going on there but they still left it open well Let's uh, have a better view of the site. This is uh, the job. This is where the job is going on. You can see the site. This is uh, Metallurgica, opposite Metallurgica. Or oh, both there. So you can see it's been taken care of now. And take a good look at it. This place they used uh, laterite to uh, cover. It's not supposed to be laterite. It's supposed to be sharp sand. I'm supposed to use the uh, sharp sand to cover up that place so that uh, it will it will level up very well. It will, you know, sharp sand always uh, stay compacted together more than this laterite. Laterite will let her lose to give up space inside so i don't know people with the way they do their own things i don't know the one that beggar did up there they use sharp sand so that it will press that place well if you come back here now 
when this thing is done now if you come back here after six months you see that that place has caved in inside well i'm not a civil engineer but uh, this is simple calculation if you ask me but however it's just um, we are, i'm guessing anywhere but i know it will happen like that and these uh, walls are supposed to be extended a bit down it shouldn't just end at that uh, where the erosion ends just like that it should be a gap it should be extended down a bit see it's almost ending at the place the the erosion end well and let's keep observing but actually we are nearing the end of this video let me just leave you to finish your observation and uh, you know drop your comments thank you